great. So already we have people introducing themselves. Some really interesting organizations there already. Wow. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us. So I'll get started. Um, my name is Alice Roche. I'm the COO of Charity Digital. I will introduce more about Charity Digital in a moment. Um, so really what this session is, is super informal. This is just uh, explaining more about who we are, how we can help your organizations, the benefits of joining uh, from saving up to 95% on our transactional website at the Charity Digital Exchange, uh, to taking advantage of our educational webinars, podcasts, uh, and free events. Um, so I'm just gonna pass over to my colleagues. So James, if you'd like to introduce yourself. Yeah. Hi everyone, thanks for joining us today. Um, I'm James, I'm the e-commerce manager here at Charity Digital, and I will be running through all of our free content that is available to Joel. Thanks, James. Hi, everyone. My name is Joel Hogan. I'm the programs manager here at Charity Digital. Uh, today, I'll be running through a little bit about Charity Digital Exchange, so more about our products and services and that side of things as well. And I'll just pass over to Elizabeth. Thank you, Joel. Welcome, everyone. Lovely to see you all here. Um, I'm Elizabeth Carter, uh, the email marketing manager at Charity Digital. And uh, I've been here for quite a long time. I'm actually a little bit embarrassed to say how many years. Um, but it's uh, it's been great. A great journey so far. And uh, back to Alice. You should not be embarrassed to say how long you've been with Charity Digital. I think it's wonderful. Um, so yeah, I'm, like I said, I'm Alice Roche, I'm the COO, uh, and yeah, before we dive into it, I just want to remind you that the webinar is recorded. The recording with all captions, slides, and supporting resources will be made available in the coming days, so do keep an eye out for an email for that. If you have a question, just pop it in the chat box. We will then come to the questions at the end of the presentation. Once the session ends, you will be prompted for some feedback. It takes a couple of moments uh, and we love to hear your thoughts on how we can improve our offering and service. Uh, so please do feel, feel free to fill that in. It's really helpful for us. So I will get started today with uh, today's tour of Charity Digital and who we are. Um, so who are we? We are a charity ourselves. We are a registered UK charity. And what we do is we offer help to other charities. We're an infrastructure organization and we have two primary charitable activities. So we, we do this via providing access to the software products at dramatically reduced prices. So discounted and donated tech. Uh, and we also publish content. So our articles, webinars, uh, videos, and we have events, and that's really about informing the sector on how to use digital to, you know, drive their missions and aims forward. Uh, to the right there as well, you can see that's one of our more recent conferences. Uh, so that's, we run an annual Be More Digital conference. We've done that for a few years, and, and that's really, you know, charities and, uh, you know, social enterprises and organizations like yourselves, they come, they learn, uh, and that can be on topics like fundraising and uh, marketing, leadership, strategy. And uh, we find these are really well attended and we get really good feedback. Uh, so do keep an eye on, you know, upcoming events we have. If you go on to the next slide, Joel, please. So yeah, just a very quick thing around our impact. Um, yeah, some nice stats there for you. So we are really, really proud of helping over a million charity professionals learn about digital transformation through our webinars, our podcasts, uh, and our articles. Uh, but we are also super proud that we have helped support over 77,000 charities save in excess of 284 million on their software products. Um, so yeah, there's a nice average there of saving per charity. And then lastly, from me, I just thought it would be really lovely to share our Trustpilot reviews. Um, so there's just some, yeah, like I said, we will be circulating all of the resources at the end, but just some really nice comments there from genuine Trustpilot reviews that you can look up. 
uh, from people like yourselves that are facing similar challenges in their organization and how Charity Digital has helped support them through those challenges. And I think the really nice thing about Charity Digital is that we are facing those challenges ourselves, those, um, although we don't fundraise or solicit donations in the same way as other charities, um, we also have our own uh, obstacles to overcome, financial resource issues. So I think, yeah, that's that's something to really end that roundup of. Um, so yeah, and we'll we'll post the the link there. And please, any questions, just keep asking in the chat. Um, I'm going to now pass over to James, who's going to run through our content, so our articles, webinars, and a bit more about that. Perfect. Thank you, Alice. Um, so yeah, as I briefly mentioned earlier, I'll be talking through all the content that Charity Digital has to offer and a bit about our events too. So at Charity Digital, we aim to be a source of useful, relevant and trusted information on the use of digital in the UK charity sector. So our mission is to help every charity grow their impact through digital technology. As such, our content has four aims to inspire, inform, empower and to connect charities with experts, partners and resources to help them go further. Our content currently comes in many formats. So we have webinars, articles, podcasts, videos and events. So if you could go on to the next slide, please, Joel. So I thought it'd be good to start with our podcast. So we publish a new episode regularly, so every other month, and you can listen on our website, on Spotify, on Apple Podcasts, and other places that you get your podcasts. They tend to be a conversational exploration of different topics affecting the charity sector. Many of our episodes feature Charity Digital's very own employees, and we research the topic heavily and try to answer the talking points around it. So we've done episodes on the cost of living crisis, climate change, and much more. Occasionally, we have speakers join our podcast externally, so featuring experts from across the charity sector. We have a fundraising trends episode where we reach out to fundraising specialists to discuss what's new for the coming year. And we have an upcoming episode talking to charities about digital inclusion and how we can support it. Thank you, Joel. On to the next slide, please. So webinars, we also regularly run webinars, usually at one o'clock in the afternoon on a Thursday, unless otherwise stated. Each webinar lasts an hour, including time for attendees to ask questions at the end. The aim of our webinars is to share expertise so that each attendee comes away with valuable knowledge, whether that's on digital trends or how to create a great supporter journey. You can view our upcoming webinars on the events tab on our website. So we have one coming up next week on embracing digital finance. And you can also view our on-demand webinars there too. So there's a massive wealth of resources there. We have the full recordings of sessions and resources so you can catch up and learn something new at your own convenience. Thank you, Joel. On to the next slide. So on to our articles. We publish fresh written content on our website every weekday on everything from social media trends to a complete guide to live stream fundraising. We have lots of how to's, including running fundraising lotteries, marketing fundraising events and testing donor journeys all intended to help charities centre digital in their decision-making and make the most out of digital technology. We also work with sponsors and tech partners to deliver content on the latest digital solutions and tools available, whether it's looking into a specific donation platform or identifying cybersecurity essentials. Many of the products featured are available to purchase discounted on the Charity Digital Exchange, which Joel will come on to next, so you can understand how they work in action. When you register with us, you can access all of our content, Unlimited. We also have videos which tie in with our articles, including our Charity Digital Snapshot series, which sums up the key points you need to know about specific subjects, such as technology and the climate crisis. And you can find these on our YouTube channel. You can also comment on our articles if you find them helpful or ask questions there if you'd like us to elaborate. We monitor the comments and can, that can inform our content on what we publish next. So we want to help charities with the digital issues they face as well as talk about trends in the sector more widely. To the next slide, please, Joel. So digital inclusion. So in 2023, we launched our Climate Action Hub in order to empower charities to take the lead in becoming more environmentally friendly. Following the success of this campaign, which is still ongoing, we've launched a new campaign for 2024, aimed at supporting digital inclusion in the charity sector. Digital is essential for many people to have their basic needs met, connect with others and achieve their goals. But an estimated one in seven people in the UK cannot interact with the online world fully when, where and how they need. 
our Digital Inclusion Hub is here to help charities reach across the digital divide. We have lots of content, all of which is free, highlighting digital inclusion resources, exploring how to make technology accessible and featuring interviews with charities who are tackling dig digital exclusion themselves. Next slide, please. So on to our events. We run lots of events, such as our upcoming Charity Digital Workshop series, which is themed this year around how to digitally, tr digitally transform and thrive in 2024. These in-person workshops provide skill building exercises, case studies, practical advice, expert guidance, and much more around four key themes, fundraising, marketing, strategy and leadership, and artificial intelligence. We also host online workshops, which are our most interactive events, with breakout rooms and room for discussion on topics as varied as financial literacy and running cybersecurity exercise with your team. Most of the time, these events are free to attend with the exception of our in-person workshop series and all have content you can take away with you afterwards. You can keep up to date with what's coming up by checking back on the events page on our website. And next slide, final one from me, please, John. The easiest way to stay up to date with all of our content is to register and sign up for our newsletters. So you can do this when you register or at any time afterwards by going onto your account on our website. You can also follow us on LinkedIn and sign up there for our monthly Charity Digital Digest to never miss a thing. I'll now pass on to Joel, who will take you through the Charity Digital Exchange. Thanks very much, James. Thanks for that warm handover as usual. <laughs> so uh, Charity Digital Exchange has been providing uh, UK charities uh, with uh, access to donated and discounted offers. So that's in the form of hardware or software, um, as well as validation services uh, and access to training for over 16 years. You may have come across us in the past, one of our previous names, such as Tech Trust, Charity Technology Trust, uh, TT Exchange as well. So it's possible you might have might be revisiting us after one of our rebrands um, a few years back there. Um, and also many of you may have come, uh, come across Charity Digital Exchange in the past uh, when you've been actually getting validated uh, for one of our partners where you use our website and uh, maybe generate a validation token to use elsewhere to access software. So today I just wanted to briefly uh, point out a few sections of uh, the Our Exchange website uh, that could be useful uh, to the organisation. So along the top of this page, you can see a few options, which I'll go over. Um, so catalog. So this is where you can view our donated and discounted offers. And uh, we'll come back to this uh, in a bit more detail in a few moments. So donors. So charitable status alone does not guarantee eligibility to access our partner offers. Uh, they each have their, their own eligibility criteria, which could be based on your, your charitable activities, your organization's income or perhaps even the quantity of licenses uh, that you're able to purchase. The donors drop down is a really useful way of checking what donors individual eligibility criteria is, as well as information about the donor and product itself. Other option there is called Grow Your Skills. So you can click on this tab and check out some of our upcoming events, uh, you know, such as our webinar, um, the webinar next week, which we've mentioned earlier, um, and also our, our in-person event as well. Uh, you can also view our past events, as James mentioned earlier, uh, such as our ever popular digital fundraising summit as well. You can also look at uh, various courses provided by our partners at TechSoup. Uh, you can find a huge range of courses, uh, such as using Microsoft software to fundraising, marketing strategies, um, courses they do start uh, from as low as uh, sometimes even one euro at some times as well. Um, so there's a, there's a bit of a mix and match there. So do take advantage to educate yourself and your team. And, uh, the help section on this drop down is just particularly useful for looking at help uh, from our validation partners, as well as providing you some information, uh, information such as delivery times, which is always a popular topic as software. But the way it works is not always instantly available due to our connection with having to contact a, a donor on your behalf to then send the software to. So just something useful for you to know. Just go up the next page. So we are here to help. So at the start of this year, we successfully launched a live chat. Uh, this tool has been revolutionary uh, to Charity Digital and allows to assist more of our users at a quicker pace. Uh, we can assist you uh, with questions that you have about your software, 
cybersecurity, discount solutions um, available to you, and free resources available to your organization. Um, if live chat isn't for you, uh, we still have the classic methods of communication uh, via email or even telephone as well. Uh, we also provide uh, IT services to small charities so we can help them get set up in the cloud uh, with either Microsoft 365 or Workspace. Uh, so an example of that, we could migrate your data over from one email provider to the cloud and also manage your cloud service, um, such as managing your users, uh, access to important files as well, and security. Uh, we can set you up um, with, a, with a cyber security solution and even help with your website as well um, and the web domain. So there's a number of different services we can provide that uh, for affordable costs uh, for small charities. And also uh, from the 19th of February, uh, we're actually bringing back our consultations, one-on-one uh, -on -one consultations uh, with myself for 15 minutes there. Um, it's just really just to, you know, if you're having to scroll for our website and maybe need a little bit more advice uh, on the options available to you, you can have a chat with me. I'd be more than happy to go through your setup and what options might be available out there uh, to you. And sorry, just the last page, got the slides in the wrong order there. <laughs> so I briefly mentioned earlier that uh, the product catalog section. So clicking on it will take you uh, to this page. Uh, from here, you can do filter searches of our products by searching by donor, partner, or the type of software you're after. Uh, we work with a wide range of organizations as Adobe, Microsoft, Avast, Zoom, Hootsuite, very popular right now, and uh, many, many more. Uh, we also provide discounts on hardware offers as well. So that's from like Dell, uh, Cisco as well was a really popular one for your cybersecurity protection. Uh, there are some huge savings to be made, as alluded to by Alice at the beginning of the presentation today. Now, in this particular image, uh, you will see offers from partners such as Microsoft, Adobe, Blast, Autodesk, and many more. On this slide uh, in particular, uh, you'll see one of our popular products listed here called Charity Digital at Dot Digital, so our mail product. And now to pass on to Elizabeth, who can go through that a little bit more there for you. Lovely. Thank you very much, Joe. Yes, the wonderful world of email marketing. Um, you're probably all using an email marketing platform at the moment. But I just want to touch on the products that we resell on to non-for-profits. So you don't actually have to be a charity. You could be a social enterprise or you could be um, an organization that works with charities as well. And uh, we resell this product on with huge discounts um, to charities. Next slide, please, Joel. So just wanted to touch on a few of the features. And obviously there are loads and loads of features that you can explore, and um, but these are some of the main ones. So we've got um, really good split testing, A-B testing, that you could do the subject title, your friendly from, or your creative as well. Um, there's an amazing reporting suite in it, and you can dive into individual reports, or you can just have a look at the dashboard. Um, also, there's it's a drag and drop, as they all are. Um, but it's got really good responsive um, uh, sort of success and you can hide and you can protect um, the responsiveness on your mobile devices as well. The automation is fantastic as well. So if you just want to set up those journeys and let them roll and you can update any campaigns that you've got in the journey, it could be a simple journey just with a, a single trigger or it could be a more complicated one as well. And um, yeah, there's lots of others, sort of segmentation and other features that you can explore. I won't dwell on it too much, um, but just the next slide, please, Joel. Don't want to take all of your time up. Um, the also the good thing about Dot Digital is it's an open source platform, so that means that you can use Dot Digital's um, developer hub to look at the API documentation that you've got there and you can set up any connections that you want at your end. You might need to use an intermediary um, if you want to, um, such as um, Postmaster or anything else that you're using there, 
or it could be just that you're looking to have um, a normal um, upload and download of the data into a platform. Now, Dot Digital do um, very smoothly um, integrate with Salesforce and also with Dynamics. And they've also got other integrations such as Beacon and uh, Donify. So if you wanted to find out any more about that integration that they have on their side, just contact me and I will happily, um, yeah, just give you more information and we can take it from there. Next slide, please, John. So the support that we offer, I do have to say, um, we have been reselling Dot Digital for coming up to 20 years. And over that period of time, I haven't been there all that long, uh, but over that period of time, our support has been great. And I'm not blowing my own trumpet, but I do have to say that the good thing about what we do is, like Alice has said earlier, um, we are a charity and we know how other charities work and we know the requirements of other charities and we are very, very flexible. So we understand the charity sector and the non-for-profit and we offer email credits. If you just want to buy up email credits, you can do that and send throughout the year. Um, or if you wanted a support package as well, we will be happy um, to provide you with more support. Next slide, please, John. So you can set up a demo with us and I can walk you through um, the main features of the platform. It will be a 20 minute walk. If you wanted to know more or if you just wanted to jump on a chat or if you want me to open a trial account, you can send up to 150 live emails um, with a trial account and you can just see how it works for you. Next slide. And the questions, so the email address is there for any questions with mail. You can also um, put your questions in on the live chat and, uh, or you can email us directly uh, like you can with our customer service as well. So I will pass over to Alice. Great, thank you everybody. That was a lot of information to take in and I work here. So I'm sure you have lots of questions. I understand that we offer lots of different things um, for all sorts of different organizations and sizes. So we'll go to some of our questions now. So please feel free to still keep chatting in the chat box, asking your questions. Uh, so we did have one that I will go to first from Kelly Hanlon asking, under the IT services that we provide, can we help with the rollout of Intune? Um, so we don't actually have our in-house person that deals with our managed services on this call today. Unfortunately, he couldn't make this call today, but I will take down your details and we can definitely see what the migration services are. As I know, we do ones from Gmail to the cloud and you know those are some of the IT services we offer, but Joel, the top of your head i'm not sure that we do in tune but we would have to ask our, our in-house person it's a possibility for sure obviously in tune is a really important piece of software now within the microsoft world of course uh by all means it could be implemented via the cloud obviously i would imagine within tune you're mainly looking at it from mobile uh, uh rolling it out on lots of mobile devices as well probably the reason why you're doing it so by all means, I'm, I'm sure that we can certainly provision the software. In terms of setting it up, um, that's where our in-house expert but would be more than happy to have a chat with you on that sense. But in terms of licensing, by all means, we can certainly provision Intune licensing. And there's a few options for it as well, whether you just want it as a standalone license or whether you're looking for some of the extra security features that come with enterprise mobility and security as well. So yeah, by all means, um, yeah, I could take that call forward. The IT services are... Yeah. yeah, yeah, Kelly, it might be useful if you actually um, put your email address in the chat. If you don't feel comfortable putting it publicly, you can direct message me and I will pass on your details to our in-house expert um, and we'll take that conversation forward. Great. Uh, so we have had another one. Um, they're coming in thick and fast now. So somebody has asked if Dot .digital is a replacement for MailChimp, for example. Which yes, it is. is. It <laughs> is. <laughs> we get this question all the time. We actually get lots of people coming over from MailChimp and they come over for um, a few reasons. Um, budgeting sometimes, the pricing just fits um, better with us. 
Other times it's to do with the support that they get a little bit fed up just having a chat box in MailChimp. But yes, it's very, very similar. Great. Yeah, I will never forget when we asked one of our lovely customers to give us a testimonial about how they found Dot Digital versus MailChimp, because we thought it might be useful for sessions like this. And I feel like they must have spent hours crafting this testimonial because they really don't like MailChimp. And he wrote like this two pages of why Dot Digital is better. So um, if anyone's actually interested in reading that, I will send it because, uh, yeah, they put a lot of thought and effort into it and they'd been with MailChimp for years and then they were talking through their experience of what it was like to move across to Dot Digital. So um, I actually on that, I actually did have a conversation um, with a new client as well that MailChimp, they were concerned that their data wasn't being stored in the UK. Um, so with Dot Digital, um, the data centers are if you send from the UK, your data is stored in the UK. If you're in Europe, um, then it's in Europe and they have one in the United States as well. Great. Yeah, no, that's really useful. Um, brilliant. Let me keep uh, going through them. So another question from Kelly is, do we have any discounted board management systems like Convene? Um, so I don't think we resell Convene, if that's correct, James, do we? But we do have... No, we but yeah, as you, as, sorry, as you were about to say, we do have um, disc, access to discounted rates for onboard. Um, so I'm not sure if you're familiar with that one, but I will post the link. Um, but that is board management software. Um, so it's really trusted by charities and creates yeah, actually, time we, saving. Yeah, we use it with our board. Um, so all of our documents and materials, my CEO and I will update there. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll have our all of our notes, our financial documents, everything gets updated on, on board. So we certainly as a charity would recommend it, not because we resell it, but because that's the one we use. I think our relationship was established with them afterwards actually, but yes, um, do let us know how you get on with that. Uh, so we've had something from Ben to say, do you offer IT user support services or is it just project work? Joel, do you wanna talk more about that? Um, in terms of, I guess, hopefully I understand the definition, but in, you, we do provide managed services uh, for charity, so ongoing support uh, by all means. So it's not just a project and then off you go, bye bye, um, which we do. We do have that as well. If that's all you want. But we also do. We do have managed uh, services where we can create um, like a wraparound service to look after, so, you know, like your emails, like Microsoft, your cybersecurity, that kind of thing. Um, we would, again, it's with our expert who's not in today, but by all means, there's a lot of flexibility on what you, you know, that we don't have a, like a bespoke, this is specifically what we cover. We, we try and be quite um, fluid in terms of what we can do per charity because each charity's needs are different, of course. Um, I know our expert um, who does these managed services and migration services, each project is uh, very, very different. So um, in the past, when we sit, we, sometimes receive queries like like how much is this going to cost what do you provide it's like it's a little bit loose because it's such just a such a different project each time really and um we're also learning from it as well so um a long answer but and i hope that makes sense but we do provide managed ongoing services uh for our charities and users as well Sure. So I think Ben sent a follow up to that just to say, oh, there's so much going on in the chat. Sorry. I'm an IT manager. So infrastructure is taken care of, for example, but potentially need some help with supporting users with day to day. So, yeah, I would I would get in touch with us on live chat uh, and, and see what those users might need support with. Um, and yeah, we can always take that back to our in-house expert who we're going to have to start getting on these calls. Mm. So many IT services. Great. Uh, a couple of people saying they want to see the document about the move to Dot Digital from Mailchimp. Um, I clearly made it sound very exciting. Yeah. <laughs> we do have a comparison PDF. Um, yes. I, I can grab hold of that. Um, can we actually send it to everybody with the document with everything and the recording afterwards? So I'll I'll put the link in there. Oh, yeah, I'll put the document include in there. Yeah. I'll include it in the resources. Yeah. Very excellent. 
and I'm scrolling up. So, oh, another one around Dot Digital. This is a really good question. So, which charities are using Dot Digital for their mailing? If you can give some examples, then they can subscribe to the newsletter and see, which is a very good idea, actually. Yeah, that's a really good idea. Um, okay, so Carers UK, JDRF, we've got quite a few um, Girl Guiding, Southwest um we've got the uh, national english ballet using it we've got the london symphony orchestra uh, terrace higgins trust trees for cities fields for trust um southwest heritage yes lots okay. so liz if you pop some of those in the chat that might be um a good one to one include in the resources but if you pop them in the chat then people can sign up to their newsletters sure i will do that right now Great. Excellent. So then there was another question around, um, I work with three churches. We have received funding to purchase IT equipment for a community project. Could you help with advice on what and how to purchase equipment and software, please? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it, I mean, Firstly, I'm more than happy if, um, if you wanted a further consultation um, or outside this call, by all means, again, contact me. We can arrange something a bit more direct. More than happy to go through those services there with you. Um, in terms of it, it'll be a good idea. To, it'll be good to know what's currently in place or what not isn't in place. Um, I guess with hardware, firstly, to keep it simple, we want to make take advantage of discounts that are available for hardware. Um, on our website, you can take advantage of uh, Dell uh, discount codes as well. So you get up to 20% off uh, of Dell hardware, um, which is which is great. Um, there are some other great organizations out there who donate hardware as well, or, or provide refurbish hardware as well. Um, in kind direct or an organization that provide um, low cost refurbish hardware as well. So it might be worth uh, signing up to them. They're a great charity, been around for a long time. Uh, software wise yeah obviously there's a few options there that you can do um obviously you want to sort your emails out um so that could be multiple directions whether it's microsoft or google um what you might want to do actually is um we are having a a group consultation in, uh, towards the end of this month uh, specifically for religious organizations about the topic of cyber security um, so by all means uh, get in quick and sign up because it's going to be quite a small group but uh, um, there's some options for cybersecurity of how important it can be um, for religious organisations. Uh, the reason why, what, in a nutshell, why we think cybersecurity is not just, you know, it's important for any charity, but specifically for religious organisations as well, is that cybersecurity can just kind of be, maybe not forgotten about, but a bit further down the checklist. And that's a challenge for a lot of people, uh, a lot of charities at the moment, where it's really about service delivery as top priority and everyone has smaller budgets right now. But there's a potential of trolls out there, uh, particularly religious organisations who could cause havoc as well. So, yeah, um, yeah, emails, um, your cybersecurity um, website might be good just to make sure you say hello to the world. Here we are. Make sure you exist as well. Um, well so we have an offer on um you know there's wix and things like that to help you to do website designing and um, help you get a, a domain as well one thing i do uh, talk about to charities who may be just starting off or who are just getting into tech is having your own uh, domain like for things for emails is really really important it comes across as more trustworthy so rather so having a domain such as you know um you know uh, stjameschurch.org would be better than uh, St. James's church at google.com. It's because you can create, you know, like, you know, fraudsters uh, and other trolls can easily make um, emails use on such things as Google. Um, but a domain provides much more safety, not exempt, which, you know, there are ways to duplicate or, 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 or ghost um, real domain emails, but it's a lot more safer and also brings a bit more trust in your audience um, as well and uh, with your following. Oh, that's a bit more information, but I'm, like I said, I'm very happy to take that a bit further with you directly. Great, excellent. So the next one we have is from Gary Botterill. Hope I've said that right. And it's asking which digital marketing tools we have. So yeah, so we've got a few. We have uh, Adobe Express, which is good for creating 
languages for marketing. Um, we also have 70% uh, off Hootsuite, which is which is the social media scheduling tool, which Charity Digital use for our LinkedIn posts, uh, Facebook, Twitter, X, whatever we're calling it. Um, and which other ones do we have, James? This is more your remit. Yeah. Um, so some projects you may not want to bring someone in full time for, um, especially if you've got a tighter budget. Um, so through Charity Digital, you can get free access to a um, database of freelancers um, called Fiverr. Um, I've seen them advertised on the tube. They're a really good, really good organization. Um, so you get free access. You can browse. Um, I think you sort of submit what work you want to be done, and then people will sort of submit a proposal to you. And then when you do then decide on that person, you can then get a discount to on your purchase. Um, so I'll post all the all of the links. Um, we'll also have some really good content on this. Um, I will ask our content team to send a summary of all the marketing tools that both we have and then other good ones that are available. Um, and we'll send that round afterwards. Sure. Thank you, James. Uh, so we just had another one from James asking if we have any case studies for the use of the MetaQuest VR. So that's really interesting you asked. I wonder if you asked that because you have seen that we are now reselling the MetaQuests. Uh, so that's really new to us. We've only just been doing that the last couple of weeks. Um, so I wouldn't imagine we've got any case studies yet but we could ask our partners in America um, if they have any examples, but it might not be overly relevant. But yeah, perhaps we should reach out to the people that have already purchased and ask them uh, how they're actually planning to use that in their day to day, if that would be useful for you. Yeah, we don't, as Alice said, I think we've had it launched for maybe a week or two now. Um, so super new for us. There is a video which kind of summarizes what you can use it for, um, just showing how people are using it for fundraising or design. Um, but yeah, I think it's quite a new product. So it'll def it's definitely the sort of thing that we'll be producing content and asking people for reviews as we go along. But really good question. Yeah, my daughter has one. They freak me out so much. <laughs> I was, yeah. Maybe I'm just old. Um, so the next one is, um, are you able to support file move reconciliation and mail transfer from Dropbox, Bluehost into Gmail or Drive? Great question. Again, I would say, uh, missing man say, uh, so on our website, um, I'm sure James posts a link, we have our IT support services link. So you can actually just post, you can actually request a consultation with our head of IT. Uh, you can go through your services. I know that he does um, a lot of data transfer. Uh, and like I said, a lot of our projects are, you know, they're very ad hoc. They, they get very, very much. So it will depend on the size of the project and capacity as well. So by all means, um, give it a go and have a, an arrange a, a meeting with our head of IT and see if we can work together for sure. Excellent. And have we pasted the page on how to get in touch with the head of IT regarding the managed services? I'm yes. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Brilliant. Okay. Uh, then we've had another question saying, asking why we're using Hootsuite if we already use Dot Digital. So Liz, I'll pass over to you. That, that, that's a really good question because if you're already using Dot Digital, you know that Dot Digital does integrate with your social media. Um, I'm not too au fait with Hootsuite, but I know that it's a, a social media management platform, which is different from Dot Digital, which is an email um, marketing platform. Um, so I. Yeah, I couldn't really compare like for like. Um, James, do you know any more about Hootsuite? Um, I know it's super user friendly. That's basically why we do it. You create one post and then it'll post it on all of your socials. Um, it's really good with social media scheduling. So that's the main reason we use it. We can schedule posts for as far in advance as we like. Um, but I guess it's kind of user preference, really. Um, we can 
we can explore the two and compare um but, but yeah does... a lot of the time it comes down to personal preference yeah i i don't know what the the, the capabilities are really for the email management um on hootsuite um so yeah, yeah. Hootsuite we something. purely use for um, posting on mm. our social media because it's nice and simple. Um, but that's not to say that the dot digital one isn't. It's just not something that we've explored ourselves. So great question for us to have a review internally. Yeah. Yeah, Could we combine. do annual, annual software reviews. I've just posted the, uh, I know you posted the link for the consultations, but I've actually posted the specific booking link. So if you would like to get in touch, Ben, I know you had some questions earlier around the day-to-day -day support of users. Uh, there's been a few questions around the, um, yeah, Naomi, John, you were asking around the support file move reconciliation. So just use that booking link and you can just book in a free consultation with our head of IT and he'll be able to answer any questions you might have. Uh, I'm just going through our list. So just remember that we will uh, we will send all these slides supporting resources, the dot digital comparison um, from Mailchimp, the testimonial, uh, which yeah we'll we'll send. Um, and just looking at other questions that we have. So we've had, what software or others would you recommend to a brand new charity? We are small, so our funds are limited at this stage. Sure. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, that's a good start. Um, I guess if you're a small charity, um, your presence online might be minimal at the moment. So I, I, I mentioned uh, this about the, uh, to the churches previously, but um, uh, important thing for uh, for visibility is to have a website. Uh, the reason being is that in terms of eligibility for drugs that you as a charity can get access to. Um, it's not just determined by your charitable status. As I mentioned earlier, it can be determined by things like your activities or your income. Now, having a website will help clearly determine the type of chari uh, charitable acti activities that you're taking part in. So that will help you get access to more software. So uh, there are types of charities out there which may struggle or take a much more longer amount of time to get access to software. Um, you don't have websites, uh, grant making um, charities tend to, in my experience, tend to uh, sometimes struggle with that because they, they see entries for them on the charity commission, but there won't be a website or a dead website. And then all they do is just, you know, they they provide grants, which is great, but it's it's a bit more difficult to see some website evidence of it. So um, starting off with a website, um, so we do have an offer on Wix and to get you, which is like a discount code for a two year subscription, they can help you uh, get a domain. Or you can get a free charity domain uh, via there's a link on our website as well where you basically your domain website link would or email should end with dot charity rather than dot com or something like that as well. That's a good place to start with. Um, some freebies. Some of them I mentioned been already today. So Adobe Express um, is uh, sorry, and did I say Adobe Express Premium is uh, free for eligible charities. So that will help you with your, your sort of social media planning, uh, designing things as well it's a little bit similar to canva you have experience with that so that's something to take advantage of and also as james mentioned earlier fiverr as well i'd imagine as a small charity um you might not be employing people here like constantly over and maybe having little projects here and there um as one off so you might want to use uh fiverr to get access uh, to people who can provide like one one off projects as well um and then yeah um there's lots of sort of um in terms of the emails as well, um, you can take advantage of Google for nonprofits as an option, Microsoft 365 for nonprofits as well, have lots of low cost options as well. Um, so, yeah, there, there's a lot of like low cost options out there just to help a charity get started and help you uh, deliver your impact. Great. Thank you, Joel. Uh, so we have had another question around which software community interest companies and social enterprises would be eligible for mm -hmm. so the slightly frustrating part of that is that we don't get to decide as charity digital who is eligible for which offer so we work with our partners and our donors like microsoft uh, and they determine the eligibility criteria uh, for which organizations can access their software 
So uh, unfortunately, uh, charities do get access to a lot more registered charities uh, and social enterprises and community interest companies don't get access to quite as much. Uh, however, Dot Digital, as we touched on today, which is the email marketing platform, you can access that. Um, one of our most popular cybersecurity offers, which is a vast, uh, and what we use internally for our cybersecurity, uh, that's available for social enterprises and community interest companies. Um, we have Calxa, we have a vast sea cleaner, we've got the free domain service. Um, I think James has just popped the link into the chat of which ones you can access. Uh, but yeah, it's always a bit of a contentious subject for us because if we got to determine that ourselves, we would say everybody was eligible, uh, but unfortunately we have nothing to do with setting out that eligibility criteria, unfortunately. But we are feeling that there's a bit of a shift. Uh, and from certainly even when I first joined to now, it does feel like donors are, uh, yeah, un unleasing more of their offers uh, and widening that uh, service to to more social enterprises, community interest companies, CASCs, et cetera. So, yeah, so James has provided that. I think we've also posted a link for our feedback as well. So um, please, if you do have to drop off, we won't be offended, although we are here until 2 p.m. Uh, so we'll, we'll keep those questions coming. Uh, so we've had our kicks eligible for Adobe Express Premium. Joel? Uh, no, not currently, I'm afraid. Um, it's they were specific. talking about it, weren't they? They've been yeah. talking about it for a, a while and saying yeah. it's coming. So potentially, yeah. But it's all like I'm, I wish we could be more clear, like it's definite right now. But uh, all I can say is like watch this space of Adobe Express for sure. Um, check in with us regularly. But at the moment, as we speak right now, it's specifically for charities at the moment. Um, you can go directly to the Adobe website for, uh, I think it's like the Express, the normal version. I think anyone can get that for free, but the premium one specifically for charities at the moment. But keep checking in with us on Adobe Express's eligibility, as well as eligibility for other partners as well. Um, it's certainly something we would shout from the rooftops about when any of our sort of products are available to organisations outside of charitable status. It's We, 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 we see it as a real win for charity digital when something like that happens. Great. Uh, so we've also had a question. Uh, I remember this was a pre-submitted one uh, that we got emailed. So which hardware offers are available via Charity Digital? We have moved to a new premise and we are looking for discounts. Sure. Um, yeah. So we mentioned earlier, um, obviously, Dell provided discount 20 percent. And we moved to a new premise, so you might want to be sorting out your, your sort of broadband connections and things like that. So you might want to look at Cisco as well. Um, in terms of setting up your uh, the hardware uh, and making it secure as well for to setting up your your network, um, we have Lenovo as well. It might be I think the offer might be out of stock at the moment. The offer, but um, sometimes our partners just have to rejig their offer uh, from time to time. But that's still on our catalogue, and hopefully should be coming back soon. And yeah, um, more recently the uh, the better portal offer um, for hardware has uh, recently come out in the past couple of weeks or so. So. Yeah, um, I would say those are the main hardware offers from Charity Digital. Um, as I mentioned earlier, there's lots of great organisations out there who, who provide either access to discounted uh, tech as well. Um, you've got like Computer for Ball, um, Inkind Direct I mentioned as well. There's so many out there. You might want to start looking locally as well. Uh, I, there's a lot of it, it, um, a lot of hardware resellers for charities so who do refurbishments. Um, they tend to be um, some are quite localised as well. I, I, had the pleasure of speaking um, with a Cambridgeshire based organization that does that um, late last year. So perhaps it might start might be worth start looking in your county for uh, somewhere local like that. Great, thank you. Um I don't know if we have any more questions unless I've missed any James I'm trying to keep up with the chat. Um, as far as I'm aware, we've covered all the ones in the chat, but please do shout if we've missed your question. Um, and feel free to ask another. Yeah, definitely. Like I said, we have live chat across all of our websites. Uh, we are a charity ourselves. Uh, we do a series with our 
online content, which is our own tech reviews. So what we use internally, you know, Microsoft versus Slack and, you know, what we prefer to use Zoom versus Teams. And so do keep an eye out for our tech reviews. James, if you could find that series um, and post the link, that would be really yeah. good. And actually, it's prompted me to think that maybe we should do one on onboard. Um, the, C the CEO or me do one on how we use that for our board at meetings, which we do quarterly. Um, trying to think of other things. Yeah, we've got our lovely, lovely experts on live chat, which we've already had nice positive feedback on in this uh, in this chat, saying that you were very helpful apparently yesterday, Joel. So I don't doubt it. And right. uh, those are our email addresses as well. If you ever need anything, you know, we do nine to five thirty. Monday to Friday, we've got the CD workshops, CD just being Charity Digital, we've got the Charity Digital workshops coming up uh, at our offices in Resource for London, in North London. That's coming up in March next month. Goodness. Yes, March. <laughs> Come around quick. We do bi-weekly webinars every other Thursday. This is just, um, yeah, this is a bit of a, an exceptional one because we like to run these to remind people that the support is here. We're here to help, uh, whether that's through the free content or the events or through the software. So, yeah, we'll be here until two if anyone else has any questions. And you can book your consultations with our head of IT or Joel for your software needs specifically. Uh, and again, you can reach out to Liz if you would like more support with your email marketing. But we will circulate all of our resources and the recording of this. And yeah, you can have all of that at your fingertip. Let me just check the chat as it looks like there are some things. Oh yeah, so thank you, James, for posting the tech reviews. And yeah, please do, to help us continue to improve these sessions, make sure that they're relevant. Uh, please do fill in the feedback, which will take one minute, two minutes yeah. max. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. See you soon. Thank you.